I've seen that with um, like 13, 14 year olds. I've seen it with um, 17, 18, 19 year olds um, who are so talented. Um, obviously the coaches want to stay in, carry on swimming. Parents want to stay in, carry on swimming. I think to a certain extent, the swimmers probably carry on for longer than they want to. Um, and then just gets to a point where they're burnt out or just completely, you know, completely not themselves, not their own personality anymore. Um, and then, you know, sadly have to stop. But, you know, swimming isn't everything. Um, sport isn't everything. And um, it's people's happiness that is important. But it's sort of what what is it that makes that swimmer get to that point where they're not enjoying it that much? That's what's the sad thing. Everybody has a breaking point, and once that breaking point is reached, you know, they just feel they can't go on, you know, they can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And because they've not been taught to identify what's going on with them, to them, it's like, I'm just done, I can't do this, you know, which is even a safer option than having a total breakdown or using drugs or, or having a mental health breakdown, you know. So these things happen, and they happen more frequently than we know of. We hear of the very prominent ones, prominent athletes, but what about? The person that doesn't become an Olympic star, but has a lot of potential, you know, and things just go wrong. And wonder, well, how did things go wrong here? What went wrong? He was doing so well. She was doing so well. It didn't start in one day. As a welfare officer, we want to make sure we are approachable. Um, and everyone, parents, coaches and swimmers know how to, to come and talk to us at welfare and um, have that place where they can share their worries. Um, and it's just making sure as a club that it's signposted. So regular communications with parents. Hi, we're here if you need us, that type of thing. And then getting them to, to share their story and share what's happening and then getting together face to face and having a conversation with the parent, the swimmer and talking to the coach. And making everybody aware of what it is, it's, it's communication has got to be the key. You know, I haven't had to deal with anything like this at Soundwell Swimming Club yet. Um, but it's but that's what I would expect, that my inbox would have an email from a parent or a coach saying, this is what I've noticed, this is different, this is a change in their behaviour. You know, what do you think you can do? And my first point of call would be to, to speak to the swimmer speak to the parent and just kind of ask some questions about how's it going and that sort of thing. I think that's one big thing people are afraid of, you know, that, oh, if I say something to my kid, will that bring, make them do something or will that put ideas in their head? No. I think the fear of getting it wrong should never make us do nothing, you know. I mean, we, we live in an information age. All you have to do is go to Google and think, okay, this is what my kid is going through. How do I approach this? You'll find some information. Or you'll find somebody like me. I mean, I can't tell you how many people come to ask me. I, I don't, people I don't know at all. Somebody will just say, oh, I know somebody who might be able to help you talk to this person. And I don't think I know of one psychiatrist that will refuse to help if they can. You know, I, um, it's a way of giving back, you know. So there will be somebody you can talk to even if you don't know what to say or what to do, you know. So if you think, don't be afraid to ask your kid, what is going on? Are you, if you're self-harming, what is going on? What are you thinking of? Do you feel like harming yourself? Do you have thoughts of wanting to kill yourself? Or are you depressed? Are you afraid? Are you anxious? You should not be, you should not be afraid to ask those questions. Or do you want to talk to somebody else? Should I take you to somebody else, you know? And even if a kid refuses, you can still take them to somebody else to find out, and you know, even somebody else you can talk to. I think we always need to say something. Now, the flip side is when kids are spoken to badly, you know, I've, I've read enough books and I've seen enough things to know that there's a lot of potential bullying and trauma that can occur with kids doing competitive sports, you know. And these things, if they're not helped, it can be far-reaching. You know, trauma leads to its own types of mental illness. You have kids that become emotionally disturbed, unstable, um, they become anxious, they lose their self-esteem, lose their confidence. It's a very high-pressured, competitive sports is very high-pressured. And I think that's why it all comes back to the fact that 
these kids need somebody helping them while they are doing the sports because there are a lot that goes on there, a lot, you know. And a, a parent can do it all. You can do it all, no matter how engaged and involved you are. So we come up to the point of what you're doing now, um, um, Andrea, to raise awareness that kids need doing this kind of sports. They need mental health support, you know. I think we've come a full 360 now. Well, they need it because it's such a high pressure environment that they do need it. It's there, there's just no gray area. It's not neither here or there. It, it has to be done, you know. And if it's not done, I think the consequences are there, and they, they may not they may not be seen this year or next year, but it will come out, you know, if these kids don't get the support they need. And we see it every day. We hear of news. I I I, I like keeping up with, you know, current affairs. We hear, we see it every day. Athletes that would have had the world, or they've even had the world, but they then lose it. You think, well, how could it, somebody that has made millions of dollars or millions of pounds just become an alcoholic and lose everything, or becomes a thug and starts using drugs? You know, but what went wrong there? I think it's closely related to mental health issues. You know, they're not being able to cope with the stress of that comes with life. One of the big things that, that I always do on my camps is I explain the, the triangle. I always use the triangle. So it's the, the swimmer at the top, the parent and the coach, you know, and having that really, really strong communication with those three areas is, is really, really important. Um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, if the coach wants it more than the swimmer, it comes in a bit of an uneven balance. Sometimes when the parent wants it more than the swimmer. Ultimately, the swimmer is the person that is in there swimming and, and, and racing. You know, they're standing on the blocks, they're swimming up and down in training, and everything else around the swimmer is a support mechanism. And if that isn't there, if that swimmer is not enjoying themselves or not communicating with the coach or the parents, then it, it, can, it can really, really struggle. So it's it's yeah, I've seen it many, many, many times. Uh, swimmers have, 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 you know, had all the physical attributes, but then you know they just get to a point when they're just like, this is just too much stress. I, I you know, everyone wants me to swim well, um, and I don't want to do it. So it's it's starting those conversations early and going back to what we were talking about earlier is the the educational side of educating the, uh, and helping the parents. I know now I'm a parent, I've got two, two um, uh, young children. So it's really, really important that the, the parents have the education there. Um, the coaches are supported um, and understand that, you know, their role, what their role is for the, for the young swimmer. I mean, the coach isn't uh, a psychologist, you know, leave the psychology, the experts. You know, we always say, you know, we're not, as a coach, we're guiding them through to swim fast. And if we can bring in expertise from every, you know, other areas, then it makes the athletes much, much stronger. So any one of us will have our own ways in which uh, either physically our body reacts or the way in which we react ourselves to more stressful situations. Um, I think over periods of time within other environments, we learn how to we adapt and how we deal with those. Um, the same should go for sport. Uh, if you know if a child is is suffering issues at an early stage, um, then the open discussion, if somebody to actually recognise that, somebody to say something, somebody to offer some support at an early stage to discuss it, um, can prevent so many issues later on going going on later on. So um, I think yeah, the, the key is again communication is actually somebody recognising somebody speaking to the child, speaking to the parents about that, how that can be supported. And actually, you know, there could be measures put in place to actually try to reassure a child and, and try to address those issues at the earlier stage. I suppose the, the elite athletes, when you get to the very small group of elite athletes, you know, uh, on an you know, international stage, they do have professional support. Uh, but of course, some of those behaviours might be, you know, ingrained and, and not ha having been able to be prevented uh, throughout uh, the, the years and years leading up to that particular point. I think when we're not performing, we have a tendency to do more of the same thing that we're already doing. So what I mean by that is 
we're not performing well, so we think it must be technical, so we put in more work technically. You know, we're not performing well, or maybe it's a physical thing, so we put in more work physically and in the gym as well. But I think for me, what is neglected is the mind, right? We, your mind is ultimately your control center. It's responsible for how you perform and it's very active when we're having these high level competitions, but we often don't train it. You know, we spend hours with swimming. We spend hours in the pool. We spend hours land training. We spend hours in the gym. We all recognize how important your mindset and psychology is to performance but we don't do anything about it a lot of the time. A lot of the time we just assume that we should be able to think clearly. We should be able to manage our thoughts. We should be able to deal with nerves and pressure and anxiety. But if we're never taught how, then how can we expect ourselves to perform under pressure when it really matters?